Welcome back to the second hour of our program. Uh, yesterday, I made a, 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 a substantial, well, not substantial, I, I, I made a donation to a charity that, that uh, I just uh, am so impressed by. And I encourage you to do the same. It's uh, the Ukraine Children's Action uh, Project. There we are. <laughs> I'm missing the, the, the words here right on time. I'm not seeing it right. Anyway, um, and it's run by Dr. Erwin Redlener, or started. He's a pediatrician and child advocate. He's a senior research scholar at Columbia University, uh, the National Center for Disaster and CDP. He's the author of The Future of Us and Americans at Risk. Uh, the website is Ukraine CAP. Uh, dot org, ukrainecap.org, and uh, that's also the Twitter handle, or Erwin Redlener MD on Twitter, or CH Fund. Uh, Dr. Redlener, welcome to the program. Tell us about ukrainecap.org, the Ukraine Children's Action Project. Yeah, well, thanks so much for having me, Tom. And uh, this has been really an incredibly intense uh, uh, situation for me and for my wife, Karen. We've been working together, by the way, for 51 years, having been in uh, Lee County, Arkansas, a long time ago. But um, one of the things that we have spent our lives thinking about are children who live in an extreme amount of adversity, whether it's homelessness in New York or uh, refugees. I met with and visited Syrian refugees in refugee camps in Greece, etc. So when the invasion of Russia, uh, invasion by Russia of Ukraine happened on February 24th, and by the way, Really, this war has its roots in 2014 when uh, Russia annexed the Ukrainian area called Crimea. In any case, on February 24th, the uh, Russians uh, launched a major invasion, hoping to get into the country with hundreds of thousands of troops, get into um, uh, the capital, and take over the country and its government within a few days, maybe take a couple of weeks. Well, that, of course didn't happen. And what instead ensued was this prolonged, uh, unbelievable invasion of Russian forces into Ukraine. And it's been a pretty much of a nightmare ever since. And the reason Karen and I got involved is uh, we've been friends with uh, Joan Baez, the iconic folk singer for years. And uh, she's become a portrait artist. And she painted this beautiful portrait of uh, President Zelensky of Ukraine and then sold Prince of it and raised about $125,000. And just to get to the point here, she's, she asked me to help her figure out where to donate it to. So we did, and we went to our first visit to the region, visiting with Warsaw, Poland, and uh, Ukrainian refugees, children, and mostly moms. But um, that was the first of four visits, and the last three have been to Ukraine as well as uh, Poland. And uh, what we've decided to do in the beginning of this uh, endeavor, when we first formalized the not-for-profit organization that you mentioned, the Ukraine Children's Action Project, uh, we tried to figure out a niche for us that would make sense for our background and experience and for what we think are very pressing needs for the children of Ukraine, both the ones that have been displaced from the east and sought safety in the west of the country. Those are called uh, internally displaced people, as well as the um, people that are actually refugees and have moved to other countries, Poland being the largest recipient of these refugees. And it's been unbelievable. But, you know, before the war started, uh, started Tom, there were seven and a half million kids in Ukraine. As we speak right now, Five million of those children are displaced either within Ukraine or outside of Ukraine. And this led us to think about what are these children actually needing right now? Well, the two biggest problems beyond the immediate humanitarian needs of food and medicine and protection are the enormous amount of psychological trauma that they've experienced and secondly, the discontinuity of their education. So those are our two original areas of focus, in addition to which, as a pediatrician, we've set up programs to help uh, train pediatric specialists there. But all this was going along, and we're doing quite well with the foundation. We have quite a few very interesting people on the board of advisors. 
But on October 10th, the situation in Ukraine switched from a war in some sort of traditional sense with an invasion by Russia to a full-blown campaign of terror aimed at the civilian population of Ukraine. And this has been a nightmare, and I'm sure you and your listeners have read uh, a lot about what actually is happening there, but the Russians are targeting the infrastructure of Ukraine that provides electricity and heat and uh, clean water, et cetera. And here we are with the day before yesterday, the wind chill factors temperatures in uh, Ukraine were in the 12 degree range. So sub freezing. Oh we have 10 or 15 million, at least now, Ukrainian civilians, including millions of children, who are facing a winter from hell. And uh, this is what we've now accelerated uh, a number of humanitarian efforts that we've engaged in, which include uh, winter clothes for children and uh, wood burning stoves, and now uh, intense focus on generators. More to say, but. Yeah, that's a long enough intro, I think, here, Tom. Yeah, sure. We're talking with Dr. Erwin Rendlener. He is a pediatrician and child advocate. Uh, he, he started the Ukraine Children's Action Project. UkraineCAP.org is the website. Uh, very easy to find. It's also the Twitter handle. And uh, as I said, I, I have donated to this charity, and I, I encourage you to, too, to, to check it out. Um, Dr. Redlener, what how, how are you getting aid into Ukraine? Uh, I, and I realize there may be some things you can't tell us because, you know, you don't want supply lines to be attacked or whatever. But, you know, how, how yeah. does that work? So the principle is, I think a lot of people uh, who are feeling great empathy with what's happening there want to know what, what is it that they can do as individuals. And I think the first cautionary note is that it's very difficult to manage donation of physical objects like if you wanted to donate a generator actually buying it in the states or in western europe and and then delivering it uh especially shipping from the u.s is really uh a logistic impossibility basically so what we've done is that the money we've raised uh we have a small uh group of people that are helping us first of all we have one uh employee who is a ukrainian woman fantastic and we've set up a regional office uh for the ukraine children's action project in lviv in western ukraine uh but we also have two extraordinary volunteers ukrainians and what they as we speak actually they just returned from their latest trip to a city in poland where there's a large factory manufacturing uh generators and we're buying hundreds of them. And um, so we raised the money. We have been there ourselves many times, so that we're able to understand the dynamics there. But the two volunteers, Vlad and Ketty, uh, will go. They'll shop for whatever it is we need. And they are extremely reliable. And they will uh, arrange the delivery and installation of these generators, for example. We did the same thing with wood-burning stoves uh, last month. So the need is tremendous, and we've worked out the logistics. And we're, after many years of working with not for profits, Tom, I'm, Karen and I are literally obsessed with making sure that what we do is transparent. We're on the ground, uh, we're hands on. And um, it's one of the things that's always sort of troubled me a little about some of the larger organizations. It's impossible to find out what happened exactly with your donations. We've taken the opposite stand, and we just wanted to reassure people, much as we can, that every dollar that's contributed uh, will go to uh, providing what's needed there. Our overhead is really low. It's uh, 8%, and uh, it's all working. That's, yeah. that's absolutely amazing. You know, having having been involved with charities for years and years, I you know I, I totally get it. And and uh, I'm I'm so glad to see what you're doing here, Dr. Erwin Redlener. The the uh, website is ukrainecapcap.org, as in Ukraine Children's Action Project, CAP Children's Action Project, and uh, also Ukraine CAP on on Twitter. Uh, check it out. These this is a great charity. It's the end of the year. It's tax deductible. I'm assuming, Dr. Redlener. Oh, very much so. Okay. Of course. Thank you so much for being with us, sir. Thank you, Tom. Thanks for the opportunity. Great talking with you. We'll be right back.